It's great to be here, and what a distinguished group of panelists we have today uh, to talk about a very important subject. And that subject is about people, real people, family members, friends, and patriots of those of you that are here. The United Nations tells us that uh, Camp Liberty is now ready to take the Camp Asheroff residence. They and the Iraqis assure us it's safe. But you know, I just don't trust the Iraqis. Uh, I have personal reasons for not trusting the Iraqis. Let me give you what occurred, an example of what occurred last year. Myself and other members of Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, we went to Iraq. And we saw not only our troops, but we met with Maliki. And during our conversations with Maliki, the subject came up about Camp Asheroff. Imagine that. And we asked Prime Minister Maliki that if we could go as just members of Congress to go visit Camp Asheroff and find out for ourselves what has been going on in Camp Asheroff. After all, last year, we all remember, people in Camp Asheroff were murdered. They were murdered by the stormtroopers of the Iraqi government. And we just wanted to talk to these folks that survived and find out what happened. And you know, Mr. Maliki said no. Oh, no. Oh, no, you can't go to Camp Asheroff. Why? Because I'm in charge and you can't go. That was basically his reasoning, which is no reason at all. And then I made the mistake of asking one more question, and we got one of the greatest lawyers in America right here, knowing that you shouldn't ask more than one question unless you really want to hear the answer. And I said, what do you have to hide down there in Camp Asheroff? Don't you want the world to know the truth? That was the wrong question to ask because the meeting all of a sudden was over. And we, um, we leave and we had other places to go in Iraq and I can't tell you where, but we leave and we're flying around on these U.S. military equipment helicopters and the next thing we find out that we have gotten word from Mr. Maliki that we were evicted from the country. We were told to leave Iraq. So I guess we asked the wrong question to Mr. Maliki. And of course, we didn't leave until we were through with what we were doing as members of the United States Congress. But that showed me in a very personal way the attitude about that government and the attitude it had about some wonderful people in Camp Asheroff. And now we have Camp Liberty. And once again, we're faced with the same issue. If there's nothing to hide about Camp Liberty, let us in to see what's taking place. Start, first of all, with the lawyers. How about letting the lawyers get in? How about letting family members get in? You know, even in prisons, we let lawyers go see their clients and their family go see their client, but not in this prison. They cannot go. Why is that? Maybe there are things taking place that those in the power don't want us to know. There is uh, uh, several issues, and I want you to know that members of Congress in a bipartisan way, are doing everything we can to keep these issues to the forefront, not only here in Washington, but to the people, freedom-loving people of the world. And we will keep arguing and dis discussing these issues. The deadline, the three-month deadline that has um, come as far as the uh, issue with uh, Camp Asheroff uh, is not enough time to process the uh, all of the people in the camp. We need six months. You know, the UN is a government organization. A, the government can't function, almost do anything in three months. We need more time to process the folks. 
The UN needs to talk to these people. We need to make sure there's enough time and all of their concerns are met and that we need to make sure that the safety and the security of the residents is secured. The uh, issue of political refugees, what happens when the UN declares them to be p political refugees? Then the issue comes up, okay, they're political refugees, where can they go? It's difficult for them to go anywhere, and the reason that they can't go anywhere is because of our government. The United States government continues to put the MEK on the foreign terrorist organization list. And as long as it's there, other countries in the world are going to be hesitant, as they already have, to allow those members of the camp to come back to, in many cases, countries that they're citizens of. We need to, in the United States, as a nation, make sure that the State Department removes the MEK designation to those good folks that are halfway around the world because that label of a foreign terrorist organization needs to be removed and the person that needs to be labeled that is Ahmadinejad who's the dictator of Iran rather than the people that are in Iraq. So I want to say and encourage you to stay in the fight because you know all good things cost something and they cost time, they cost your personal involvement. But we are not going away. And those good folks in Camp Asheroff, their safety is paramount not only to you and to them but to every freedom-loving person in the whole world. And the best hope for the world down the road with all of this talk of nuclear weapons from the little fella from the desert, Ahmadinejad. The greatest hope for the world is that he be removed by the people of Iran and that they take control once again of their country. Because our quarrel is not with the people of Iran. The world's quarrel is with Ahmadinejad, the dictator who's determined to destroy countries he just doesn't like. So we will stay with you and make sure that that hope and beacon of freedom with the members of Camp Asheroff continues to shine, and we will do everything we can in a bipartisan way in the United States House of Representatives to make sure that those people are safe and the light of liberty continues to shine so the sons of liberty and the daughters of democracy do not despair because we are on your side. And that's just the way it is. Thank you very much.